Welcome to MSU Inside Out. I'm Autumn Roll. I'm Ariel Cole. And we're here for our third show. Can you believe we made it to our third show? We survived. Right? How are you doing survived. today, Ariel? Great. Um, I like it. I like that I'm getting starting to get used to it, getting used to the show. What about you? I'm okay. It's really cold. It it's is. really cold. The weather is the, getting colder. The cold definitely stuck up on us. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, it I'm just came out of feeling. nowhere, right? During the weekend, it was so warm. It was and then, really like, warm. And then out of nowhere, it dropped to like, well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so what we have coming up today, what do you what do you have for us? Like, what are some of the things that are happening to show, in the show today? Well, I'm going to be interviewing Tori Danny. Okay. Um, she is the organizer of the Creative Social Hour, which is a pretty cool event. So I'll tell you more about that later. Okay. What about you? And I'm interviewing a special guest from the Downtown Minot Association about mm -hmm. an event, a Halloween event that mm -hmm. I'm so excited about so yeah i heard they have like four bars it's mm -hmm. gonna be awesome it is it is yeah. but lane how are you doing today doing well wish it was a little warmer yeah it's <laughs> cold right <laughs> yeah, yeah hopefully it'll warm up a little bit this weekend but what we got going on is the minot symphony orchestra and its director dr frayn amayo will be hosting its official season opener the british are coming this saturday the concert will be featuring the works of Ralph Vaughn Williams, Joseph Haydn, and Dr. Amaya. Dr. Amaya's clarinet concerto will be featuring special guest artist Benito Mesa from Columbia. The concert starts at 7.30 p.m. in Anne Nicole Nelson Hall in Old Main. Principal cellist Dr. Eric Anderson will be going into depth about the history and intricacies of the music beforehand, starting at 6.30. This lecture is free to those that are attending the symphony concert. FAA controllers are having to deal with a new menace in the sky, drones. Drones are becoming a major problem for airports. William Robinson has more on the story. Are becoming more popular in the U.S. To hobbyists, they are fun. To the ones that patrol the sky, they are becoming more of a hassle. Drone photography for me being kind of more Along the lines of the, the creative aspect of video production and uh, photography, it just adds a whole nother, whole nother edge to any of the projects you're working on. Um, gives you just a whole different angle. It, it broadens the horizons for so much more. Um, and you know, now they're beginning to be a lot more popular. And you know, if you have your normal camera and you add a good drone shot to that, it just adds so much. The cinematic view from up above might be astounding. But the true rulers of the air are not too fond of their new playmates. For the public uses, uh, like the police or even uh, the fire department, to where they can get above a fire and see how to fight it better, I think that's a really good thing. Uh, the local uses, it's kind of, kind of um, a little bit tricky there. You know, being close to a towered airport, it makes it a little more difficult. And there are times that uh, they can't really we're not going not to be able to fly just because of traffic and safety concerns. Uh, and of course, convoys with the base, uh, that's always a concern with, uh, with, with, with the drones. But I think basically once everybody learns the rules, and I think that's the whole key to having safe drone operations, is for the drone operators to go to that FAA app before you fly and learn what the, real, what the rules are. For more information, visit FAA.gov. I'm William Robinson, MSU Inside Out News. MSU's Wellness Center has changed their Sunday hours in response to requests by students and faculty to open at an earlier time. The Wellness Center will be opening at noon on Sundays compared to 2 p.m. and will be closing at 8 o'clock versus 10. The Rockwell will also be changing its hours in the near future due to the change. They are looking at opening at 1 p.m. instead of 3 and will be closing at 4 p.m. instead of 6. They haven't officially announced the change yet, but be on the lookout over the next couple of weeks. It's time to bust out the ties and jewelry. 
Career Services will be putting on its etiquette lunch on on Tuesday, October 11th in the MSU Conference Center. Through hands-on experience, they will answer a number of questions that students may have involving dining etiquette. This goal, the goal is to help prepare students for the professional world. Professional attire is required, so make sure to bring out your nice clothes. Students have the option to either pay $5 or use their meal plans, but it costs $15 for faculty and staff. Minot State University brings many activities to the campus for their students. The Student Government and Association has a meeting this week discussing future events and entertainment. The meeting offers a chance for students' voices to be heard and express any concerns about campus involvement. Students, faculty, and staff are all encouraged to attend the meeting on Monday, October 10th at 7 p.m. in the Wesley Room. So, Ariel, I see you got a friendly face over there with you. Yes, Tori. You know Tori, right? Yeah, we've got a couple classes. We know each other? Yeah. I'm kidding. Oh. I'm oh. kidding. Oh. We're like best friends. Oh, they. <laughs> so many people don't want to be associated with you. I'm sorry. I can't even. <laughs> okay, so. Um, our uh, Creative Social Hour is a community event. It is free to the public where creative people meet um, to make connections and to showcase their talent. And joining us today here um, is Tori Danny. Tori Danny is the organizer. Hello. Hello. Thank you so much for joining us. Of course. Thank you for having me. So how did you come up with this um, idea? So the Creative Social Hour um, started in June and um, I am really into fashion and art and anything creative mm -hmm. and I feel like there is a community out here in Minot but we just don't have a place where we can all meet each other. Um, so I thought originally this was for my senior project. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to do a fashion show and I just wanted to get people involved. Yeah. Um, so for a way to get people all together I created this mixer. And the Kratos Social Hour. Mm -hmm. And then after that, um, I wanted people to still stay connected, so I created a Facebook group, and um, there's a whole bunch of different creatives there. Um, you're in it, right? Yes. So mm -hmm. you're a dancer, and you're into graphic design. Mm -hmm. um, I know someone who's a videographer. I know someone who is into interior design, and we just like share our talents, um, ask questions, and we look for collaborations. Yeah, yeah. I saw like um, a lot of people like ask for collaborations on your page. I mean, I think it's a great way for people to connect, especially like since there's so many um, MSU students here. Right. Um, it's a great way for them to get in touch with the community as with well. With everyone else in the community, for sure. Yeah. So, um, did you have something like this when you were back in um, Seattle? Um, I've attended um, events back home in Seattle that were very similar to this, but I think it was more. Um, focus to a specific niche so I've went to blogger events and then fashion shows and I've never been to anything that is open to any type of creativity if mm -hmm. that makes sense so yeah, yeah so this is more original then I, I think so yeah I mean I'm sure there's other people that you know have created something like this mm -hmm. but I've never attended anything personally Okay, so tell us more about the upcoming Creative Social Hour. Okay, so the Creative Social Hour number two is on November 4th and it's going to be at 62 Doors. Mm -hmm. Really excited to have it at a new location. It's going to be fun and fresh. It's um, a great location. Yes, um, you're going to be performing with your dance group, correct? Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then um, Mr. Watson here on campus, he is going to be playing his guitar and then um, Andre Livingston is going to be emceeing, and mm, if anyone MC. wants to be involved, just let your girl know. Okay, so mm. like, how should people get in touch with you if they want to get involved? Um, Facebook is probably the best way to contact me, mm -hmm. um, just through the Creative Social Hour group or just messaging me, and I'm open to any help. Okay, okay, so like, it's flapper themed. Yeah, so the first one, there was no theme at all, I, and I just thought it would be fun to have a theme for this one since it is really close to Halloween, mm -hmm. and it's going to be flapper themed, so if people can dress up, that'd be really nice, but if not, that is okay as well. Yeah, so like if they, if they buy their costume, then they can wear it to Halloween. Yep, correct. Okay, cool. All right, thank you so much for joining us. Thank I you really for having me. Um, and... 
Next up on next up on MSU Inside Out, uh, an exciting Halloween bash in downtown Minot is only weeks away. Artem Merle will have the details. A big birthday bash is happening next week, and everybody is invited. James Nora will tell us about a new venue to host such parties. MSU women's soccer team has ranked again. Anthony Battle has the details on this week's Beaver action. It looks like it just might snow this week. The update on the weather with Leif Bakken. This, all this and more coming up next on MSU you inside out. All American Trophies for all your screen printing and embroidery needs. Located on South Broadway. Art Main. Women's clothing, accessories, and art supplies. Located at 13th Main Street, South Minot. Badlands Grill. Featuring steak, seafood, chicken, pasta, and classic comfort food. At Badlands, everyone is welcome. Buffalo Wings and Rings, the sports restaurant experience where everyone is a VIP. B, W, and R goes way beyond just Buffalo Wings. Buffalo Wild Wings, wings, beer, and sports. Located on South Broadway across from Walmart. Center for Extended Learning, reaching across the state of North Dakota and beyond. The Minot State University Center for Extended Learning empowers you to choose your educational path. Digital Office Center, technology solutions for every business need. Located in Minot and Bismarck. El Azteca, authentic Mexican cuisine, fresh and fast. Beyonce Bridal, located in downtown Minot, and now you can shop online. Happy Joe's Pizza and Ice Cream, good times to be together. iHeartMedia, providing multi-platform advertising and marketing opportunities for partners and world-class entertainment for listeners. Jacobson Music, a family-owned music business with three retail locations in Dickinson, Bismarck, and Minot. KCJB 910 AM, Minot's news and information station. KIZZ FM, Z94, Minot's only station for today's hit music. KRRZ 1390 AM, Minot's classic hits. KXMA, Mix 99.9, Minot's best music mix. KYYZ FM 97 kicks today's hot new country. KZTR FM 105.3, The Fox, Minot's rock station. MSU Beaver Hockey. Visit us online at msubeaverhockey.com or on Facebook and Twitter. MSU Athletics, NCAA Division II, promoting good character and a positive experience. Red Rising. MSU Art Department, stimulating creativity campus-wide by providing exhibits and art events. MSU's Theater Department, offering the highest quality of entertainment at Minot State. Enjoy. We'll see you at the theater. Midwest Oil Jobs brings employers, retailers, and other professionals from the Midwest to connect under one roof. Minot Plumbing, from winter chills through the dog days of summer. Our primary goal at Minot Plumbing and Heating is to keep your home comfortable for you and your family. Pepsi, the local Pepsi-Cola bottling company serving the North Dakota areas in Minot, Dickinson, Devil's Lake, and Botano. Pita Pit, fresh thinking, healthy eating, located on South Broadway. Qdoba, easy, on time, full of flavor. Red Green, Minot State's official student-run newspaper. Spicy Pie, pizza, grinders, beer, located at Beaver Ridge Plaza. Taco John's. Offering fresh tacos, burritos, nachos, and breakfast. Mixing Mexican and Western flavor. Watney Realtors, full-service real estate agencies handling residential, commercial, and investment properties. You can visit them online at MinotHomes.com. Watney Realtors, Kerry Montoya, located on Northwest Broadway. Welcome back to MSU Inside Out. I'm Autumn Roll, and I'm here with Deb Harris from Fiance. She's here to talk, talk to us about a special Halloween event. Deb, I'm so excited about this. We were chit-chatting um, before you came on, and you want to tell the people a little bit about what's going to happen. Well, on October 29th, which is the Saturday before Halloween, mark your calendars because we are going to have the downtown parking ramp is going to be haunted. You've heard about it in the newspapers and you've read it in the papers and you've seen it on the news. Now it's actually haunted. Mm -hmm. We're gonna haunt four rooms and they can be scary, but they will not be terrifying. How's that sound? For, for someone like me, I like the sound of that because I mean, I like dressing <clears throat> up for Halloween, but to be scared, I'm kind of on the fence about it. But I heard that you guys are gonna have like certain rooms that are dedicated solely to scaring the heck out of people and then there's going to be like something 
like a pumpkin room where you can just go and actually the very first entrance before you even pay or before you even get ID'd, um, you're going to come through a pumpkin room. Okay. So that one's just not over the top, but there is a very long haunted room. Okay. Um, and, and it is a cemetery. Interesting. And there is some zombies in there that are actual people. Okay. We are also going to have holograms. Okay. Um, so we <laughs> will have folding holograms. We'll have some talking witches. And then we have a black room, a black light room. Okay. Where everything white will be glowing. Oh, goodness. So you won't be scared in there. Really? Yeah. <laughs> so it, the event is called the Downtown Haunting Park, Haunting Park and Garage. Can you tell us where you guys got that name from? Or? Well, the garage has kind of got a bad rap for quite a long time on the news. So um, they are allowing us to actually use this facility okay. free of charge. And it is actually a fundraiser for the downtown and we're raising money for Christmas lights okay, well, and um, speakers also. So this this whole benefit is to go towards Christmas lights to wow you. And then then the wowing effect will come from all the proceeds of what you guys actually um, donate that night. Well, I might actually bear, you know, the scare factor because I love Christmas. So if it's going towards Christmas, then it I think is. I can deal with a little bit of scariness. Now, there are going to be um, different contests um, throughout the event. Can you tell us a little <clears> bit more <throat> about those contests and the prizes that you can win? I can tell you about it. So for the costume contest, it is voted on by the people. Okay. There are not judges. Okay, so you will get two, two tickets when you come in. Okay. And of those two tickets, um, you get to register twice through the night. So you could register um, and you can drop in your favorite, your favorite winners right at 7. Okay. Or you can drop in your favorite winners at 11 o'clock. It's a tally of the whole entire night. Okay. <clears throat> so you would come in a costume and we put a number on your back. And that number, people get to vote for your number. So you could sales pitch it. You can try to get people convinced so, to do it. Okay. And if you convince enough people, you'll win 500 bucks. And so you register at once you arrive. Correct. Okay. Yep. Sounds good. And then the prizes for this. Now I heard. Oh, yeah. I heard there's an excellent prize, yeah. a travel voucher. <clears throat> for 1600 uh, we've been blessed from Delta Vacations. Okay. Gave us a voucher for 1600 and that'll go to a random person at the end. You have to be present to win. Okay. You do not have to be in costume. Okay. And we have one more. We're giving away two free tickets away to the Minnesota Viking game. It's okay. called the Delta 360. And that Delta 360 is um, giving two people um, free passes to the Minnesota Viking game. First class all the way. Okay, sounds good. That really sounds. I'm I'm going to be present there. I'm gonna. I have to win that travel voucher. Oh, I'll go with you. <laughs> okay, so guys, that's the Halloween event. It's in downtown Minot, yeah. right? Downtown Minot at the parking garage, October 29th. Um, the tickets are fifteen dollars to to get in in advance. In advance, and, and we can sell out. Okay, yeah. so at the door, it's going to be charged a little it's bit more. Twenty bucks at the door if we have tickets left. Okay, mm -hmm. so you hear that? You better go get your tickets. Buy them online on our Facebook page, Mine It Downtown. Alrighty, okay. sounds good. There's an event. There's another event, um, new venue in town today. Um, James Norris standing by with more on the story. Oh, thanks, Autumn. I'm here with Daniel Alexander, and she does have some exciting news. So I heard you having a party this uh, next weekend. You want to tell us about it? Yep, it is my 22nd birthday celebration, and um, it's on Friday, um, October. 4th. 14th and it's thank god it's friday kind of a theme i guess thank god it's friday you know class is all over you know ready to turn up um so yeah you guys should definitely come out is um at the warehouse um um i have the address here one second that's okay so with that being said you know uh would you are you expecting any gifts or anything um, not really. I just really want you guys to come out and celebrate with me and have a good time because, you know, we like to have good times. <laughs> okay. And have you hosted anything before this? Um, we have. We did the blackout. We did the blackout um, homecoming part two. If you guys weren't there, it was a really good turnout. So I hope to see you guys um, next week, Friday. Okay. Oh, and the address. It is on um, 725 20th Avenue Southeast. Okay, and now I'm just curious, is there like a cover charge or anything? Um, for sure. Um, females are $5 and guys are 10 
and you pay at the door. And we are handing out flyers um, starting tomorrow and all through next week. And you will see posters posted around campus as well. Okay. And where can we receive flyers? Um, most most like we're going to be all around campus, but we're mostly going to be posted around the Beaver Dam area. Okay. So around the Beaver Dam around like noon time, you know, lunch, and you make sure you stop by and get a flyer or something like that. For sure. For sure. Okay. And with that being said, is there anything else you want to say? You know, just ready to party and have a good time there, right? Um, yep, you guys definitely should come out, and we are having a Halloween party as well, so look out for that, too. Okay, with that. Okay, and the Halloween party, you know, that's kind of good, too. With that being said, we're going to have, you know, just one more question I wanted to ask, you know, um, is there, like, a time limit to this party? Well, it starts at 11, and it's going till 4 in the morning, so it's going to be a good turn up. Okay, and so make sure that... You come early because if you don't, you're going to be waiting in line forever. And last time they threw a party, I'm sorry, I didn't make it. So they still talking to me about that. So make sure you come to the Beaver Dam and make sure you get a flyer and get your ticket and get there on time. And with that being said, I'm going to toss it back to the studio. Thanks, James, for that. Um, I will be sure to be there to get the flyers for the party. That sounds uh, exciting. Yeah, a lot of parties going on lately. Right? And why not? Looks like things are starting to liven up here. Got a nightlife in yeah. why not? It's about time. Don't it's you about say? time. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Anthony, what do you think? Are you excited uh, about this new nightlife that's um, seemed to be brewing in why not? Since I have wrestling and all this other stuff that I, I don't get to but enjoy. You just turned 21. You just I get to wake up at 6.30 <laughs> in the morning instead and work out. <laughs> That's all what being young is about, Anthony. That's oh, balance. You need balance in your life. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. But for Minot State, we got a lot of action going on. The Minot State cross country team will be on the road this Friday at the Jamestown Jimmy Invite. Look for Jana Warwick at the as the women stand out and Joel Cartwright as the man stand out for the runners here for the Beavers. The Minot State women's soccer team is now ranked 13th in the nation moving up from previous ranking of 15. The girls now have a couple of um, home games well actually one road game and one home game coming up. Their first road game is against the University of Minnesota Duluth. That game is at 6 p.m. Then the Beavers have another big NSIC game as they play St. Cloud State at 1 p.m. at the Herb Parker Stadium. Minot State Women's Volleyball will be having a couple of home games this weekend as well as the Beavers will be taking on St. Cloud State on Friday. Then the number one team comes to town and that is the Minnesota of Duluth as well. The Minot State football team is back in action after having two straight road games. The Beavers are home and taking on the University of Minnesota at Duluth. Look for Isaiah Weed to have a big game in the air this weekend as he's been killing it so far. Kickoff is at 1 p.m. and our tailgating starts at 11 p.m. It's been a rocky start for it. It's actually been a yeah it's been a rocky start now for the Beavers track and field team it is early in the preseason, and only the only two pole vault, Minot State pole vaulters have health problems coming into the uh, coming into the preseason and are unable to practice. Christopher Tom has an agitated LCL, and his he will be expected to be back within a week. While Caleb Ker Kirby has high blood pressure and will not be able to return immediately. The Minot State hockey team will be opening up their season against Jamestown. Tomorrow will be tailgating starting at 4 with free food and drinks till 7. Then the puck drops at 7.30, which you can catch at the Mesa Arena. Minot State baseball has fall ball coming. Minot State has fall ball coming. Keith Ailes has the preview. One day, I got to thinking how amazing my life would be right now. You found your place in the mystery when you said to me If all my poor decisions from my yesterdays were replaced with the powerful, positive, and deliberate decisions I started to think about the quote, yesterday you said you would start tomorrow I got thinking about another quote that said, a year from now you would wish you had started today Today, today, today Thank 
you, Keith, for that awesome preview of Minot State Baseball. The road to Minot can be, can be an exciting journey. Today we meet freshman wrestler Shane Williams. Today on the road to Minot, we meet Shane Williams Jr., a freshman from Vashon, Washington. We'll just start with this. Give me a background of where you came from, um, a little bit about yourself, and then just we'll work through your story from there, starting from the beginning. All right, well, I was born on a, on a musty day. I don't know. <laughs> uh, no, I was born in Michigan originally, a uh, little, like, little town called uh, Fenton. It's like an hour from Detroit. Mm -hmm. But my whole family was born and raised in Michigan, and I, uh, I had started wrestling when I was in fifth grade, I think. I think fourth or fifth grade, I started wrestling there for, uh, my uncle actually used to own the program. It was called Cobras, but then it moved to Fenton Tiger Wrestling. And then I wrestled there for a year or two. And then we moved up all across Michigan. I don't think I stayed in one location for more than two years. Mm -hmm. So I wrestled for a lot of like clubs and different teams. But uh, I started there and then I took a year off because of the, my parents didn't want me wrestling during like the swine flu which is kind of weird, but uh, after that, around seventh or eighth grade, I moved, my dad got fired because, or got laid off because the whole 2008, like, Detroit kind of went downhill. Right. And then it was, my dad got a job offer from for Seattle, Washington, or Moscow, Russia. Yeah. You can catch the full, full interview on the Sports Splurge or on YouTube, The Road to Minot, Shane Williams' Story. Um, that was sports. Hopefully you guys, you got to watch it. Autumn, what did you think of the story? Was it really nice? It or? was a really touching story, yeah. you know, seeing how much trials you have to actually go through and push through and actually, mm -hmm. you know, make something of yourself. But awesome. kudos to, Ch to Shane. Kudos <laughs> to Shane. Awesome. Man. Thank you. Thank um, you guys. So about those beavers, though, they are number 13 now. Yes, um, yes. I think that's really good. And plus, a little birdie told me mm -hmm. that it's going to snow soon, so. <laughs> oh, no. What a, what's going on with that, Lee? Um, well, that's, uh, that's what it is. That's the last forecast I looked at about an hour ago said mm -hmm. snow Clearly. this week. Uh -huh. <laughs> Killing me, Lee. It's kind I am of not so a bird, funny. though. I am a human <laughs> being. Thank you. Kind of the size of a bird, though. Um, uh -oh. A big eagle. I'm an eagle. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> well, you know, snow didn't come like so soon before that uh, last year. No, it didn't. It took a while for the uh, snow to come, and now uh, we might see it earlier than we wanted to. So let's take a look at the forecast. As it is 43 degrees right now, but with that wind coming at us at 22 miles an hour, it's going to be feeling like 31 out there, so that's what's going on. Still mostly cloudy, and that's how it's kind of going to look for the rest of the weekend as we take a look and see that on Friday, which is tomorrow, it's going to be cloudy here with 43 degrees and mostly cloudy across the state. Dickinson, luckily, going to be nice, but 46 degrees down there. And with that uh, nice sunshine, uh, if you get in the sun, it's going to feel pretty good. Again, over in the uh, Fargo and Grand Forks area, it's going to be the warmest near 50 degrees as we look into our Saturday where that's where we're going to see this snow coming in autumn and aerial is snow on Saturday but still 43 degrees looking at a low just above freezing mostly cloudy across the rest of the state though and still staying pretty warm over in the Red River Valley as we look into our sports outlook uh, if you want to go to the Wiseman's Rodeo on Saturday night at 6 30 it's gonna, going to be uh, 45 degrees the warmest part of the day and when it kick off for the football team at 40 degrees at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. And uh, let's take a look at that extended forecast. As you can see that on Monday it's going to be mostly cloudy. And then rain in the forecast for Tuesday. Mostly cloudy the rest of the week. Going to be a cool Tuesday. So um, again, as much as you guys don't want to see it, the potential to turn into snow is pretty likely on uh, Tuesday. And then it's just going to get cooler as the month goes on. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm definitely heading down <laughs> south for Thanksgiving. Yes. <laughs> definitely. So the song of the week this week is Love Song by Sarah Bar Bar Barrielis. I think that's the name. I know the song this week. Yes, I love this me song. too. It's been a lot of girly movies or sappy it's a great movies. Song. So we love this song. Thank you for joining us and we hope to see you again next week.
想。